Hey, what's happening, everybody? We are here breaking down our third NFC division, the NFC South, Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and New Orleans Saints. I'm Nolan Kelly, joined by Ben Rossa. Ben, what's happening? Not much, man. This is the division I've been waiting to talk about. I know you had mentioned you're into it, too. Uh, I'm really high on this division as a whole. I think it's the most fun off-season division to talk about, right? Except for maybe the Saints that are pretty boring. You know, you're going to get all of these teams have some interesting stuff to discuss. So uh, let's dive right in with the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, we have Dirk Cutter coming back to call plays. Steve Scarcese. Oh, my God, I can never say his name right. Steve Sarkeesian was fired last season. Not a lot of skill position auditions. Uh, additions offensively, but they did bring in Chris Lindstrom with the 14th overall selection. Uh, he's an athletic right guard out of Boston College. Then they traded back up into the first round to grab Caleb McGarry, McGarry a uh, six foot seven, 320 pound tackle out of Washington. Uh, he is pretty interesting. He's uh, probably a bit more of a developmental prospect, but may start at right tackle. So they've upgraded their offensive line there. Uh, what are your thoughts generally on this offense, uh, Ben? It's hard not to like them. Uh, I've been saying this on, on various shows. You've probably heard it before, but the, the Falcons don't go outside for months. Uh, I believe it's 10 straight games in a dome. You've got Matt Ryan. You've got Julio. You've got Ridley. Running game with Edo Smith. It, it seems like this team is primed. I am really high on the Falcons uh, from a lot of different perspectives. I, I've said on the betting show that we have every Friday, if you haven't checked it out, I think this is a legit team to possibly challenge the Saints in the South if, if things break their way. So I'm definitely high on this offense. I think as well, like the, their defense was, we've talked about this before, that their defense was so injured last season. And it'll be from a, just a, a football perspective, they should really, I think they almost should be the favorites in this, in this division or close to it. And they're, and they're not. So uh, welcoming back all these players that they lost, including uh, 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 Keanu Neal and, um, Deion Jones, Ricardo Allen. So th there's a lot to, uh, there's a lot to like on both sides of this ball. Uh, Matt Ryan had a really underrated season last year, 15th most points by a fantasy quarterback ever. Uh, he doesn't, yeah, like you said, he only goes outside three times this year, and he averages three and a half more points in a dome than outside. People aren't seem to be aren't super high on him this year. Are, are you drafting him at all? I absolutely am. Um, you know, you summed it up nicely. He had a big season last year, and this team just seems undervalued he has all the weapons he needs the defense being healthy will help him uh, especially from an efficiency standpoint uh, obviously if they're not behind he won't have to sling it quite as much but that's okay it's not like he won't have opportunities so sky's the limit and I, I have no problem taking him as my quarterback yeah, me too. I'm, I'm in on him. I think he's going a little bit too low. Uh, he's also got these weapons in Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Mohamed Sanu. Julio Jones turns 30 this year, but uh, most people seem to think these days that the 32 years old is when the curve that wide receivers really start to lose it, not 30 as, the, as it has been uh, talked about for many years. So I'm still in on Julio Jones as well. They get an, in best ball, they get a really enticing matchup in week 13 against the New Orleans Saints in the first playoff round. So uh, if you're looking at to possibly make it an extra round, I, I don't mind grabbing him uh, more often than not if you're in the late first round of drafts. Uh, Calvin Ridley had a really strong rookie season. Uh, he put up most of his big totals against P.J. Williams and the New Orleans Saints with 250 yards and four touchdowns in two games, only 570 yards in the rest of uh, over the rest of the season. And Mohamed Sanu also had a career season last year. Uh, so this this offense, uh, there are no shortage of options. What's your favorite target? Are, are you high on Cal, uh, Calvin Ridley? Uh, Mohamed Sanu, do you think he can repeat that performance? Not really, to be honest. I think they're all effective players for, for Matt Ryan specifically, and, and they can do their job. But no one really stands out. Julio, I mean, I'm not bringing any news. He's in a class by himself on the team. He's going to dictate the targets. And if the T TDs cooperate, he's going to have a monster year. Then you got the ground game with Freeman and Ito Smith, who should do their part. Austin Hooper is not a guy that I'm super high on. I just think collectively it adds up for Matt Ryan specifically, where he has a lot of different options that can contribute. I agree with that. I'm actually high on Austin Hooper a little bit. I think people are underrating him. He's a very talented spark athlete coming out of college. He is just 24 years old. Uh, he was the tight end six last year and is going as the tight end 11. So I think for whatever reason, people aren't excited about him, probably because there's just 
so many targets in this offense, but I'm actually targeting him at his current ADP right now, and he makes for a nice tight end two of best balls and, and a nice last round pick if you if you need a uh, tight end in your season longs. Uh, so let's move on to the running back here. What about Devonta Freeman now that Tevin Coleman's gone? Do you think he's going to take over the lead running back duties, or do you think it'll be another one of these timeshares with Ido Smith or possibly Quadriolis and I expect it to be more of a timeshare situation. You know, Freeman's one of the many, I mean, most backs we talk about, you have to say if he can stay healthy because he's been banged up in the past. But Ito Smith is a guy that even when everyone was healthy, they wanted to get him the ball. He can contribute in the passing game. And I don't think that changes this year, regardless if Freeman is healthy. So they've got a nice uh, one-two punch there that should be effective and really take the pressure off that passing game. Yep, sounds interesting. I can't wait to draft these Falcons in my drafts. I'm, I'm in. Let's uh, let's go on to the uh, Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers here. Uh, we have no real major offensive additions for the Panthers, but I think they're getting additions from within. Uh, we're expecting big step forward from DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel this season. I am extra bullish on Curtis Samuel and have been targeting him at his current ADP about three or four rounds later than DJ Moore. But DJ Moore is not uh, someone that I'm fading either. I, I just think I like the ADP of Samuel and his ADP is going to rise because he's starting to get uh, – starting to get some buzz at camp as uh, one of the best uh, playmakers on this offense. Uh, what do you, let's just jump right into the wide receivers. What are you doing with these guys? Are you DJ Moore guy? Are you Curtis Samuel guy? Uh, that's pretty much it. I don't think we're going to get too much Chris Hogan or Jarius Ray. No, I don't think so. Uh, you, you know, you, you kind of just said this and I, I'm going to flip it. I'm the same way, except I have, I'm more, I'm willing to pay uh, a little faster, more premium for DJ Moore. Just an explosive playmaker. We saw that at Maryland in college. Uh, they want to get him the ball. But both of these guys, I think, have merit. It's just depending on, you know, do you want to spend up a couple rounds earlier and grab more, or do you want to wait for Samuel? You know, Cam's going to have to lean on both of them. Obviously, he has McCaffrey in the backfield, but these two are going to do the heavy lifting through the passing game. Yeah, 100%. This should be a very concentrated passing offense, especially with weakness at tight end. Uh, it's basically three guys you're looking at, so getting most of these targets. Uh, what about uh, Christian McCaffrey? Are you drafting him first ahead of Saquon, second? Uh, if, Zeke will, if Zeke comes back, is he third? Where, where does he rank in your top three? To me, he'd be second. Uh, I, I have Saquon ahead of him. You know, McCaffrey, he's unbelievable. I think we all know that. He's going to get volume. He's going to get work. Goal line work, it seems, I mean, we're not going to go away. Pass catching, all that. Great pick. I do think, though, you know, a healthy cam could vulture some some areas of him, and we're talking as premium as you get. So, you know, for the Panthers to do anything, I think it starts and ends with Cam Newton's shoulder. They need him healthy and back to an MVP level. I totally agree with you. I, I buried the lead there a little bit. Cam Newton's shoulder was a problem last season. He is apparently uh, word out of camp that his deep ball has returned a little bit. So it's possible that uh, we're going to see the Cam Newton of old. His rushing attempts have maintained a pretty steady rate over the past five years. He's had a couple outlier seasons, but I think you can pretty much expect 400 yards and five TDs. Uh, are you high on Cam at all? I am, especially in a best ball situation because, you know, the floor is really scary, especially when we're talking about you know, a shoulder with a quarterback like that. But we know how good this guy is um, and how good the Panthers can be. They're not that far removed for, from really contending year in and year out. So I have no problem taking a stab with Cam. I do worry a little bit. There's a lot of question marks on this team, but I, I don't think the ceiling is one of them. Uh, their upside, I, I think, is one of the highest in the entire NFC. I'm just not sure that the stability is what I'd really love to see from this team. What about tight end? Pretty boring. We probably don't need to talk too much about it. Greg Olson is 34 years old, and his days as the top three tight end are long gone. Uh, I'm not grabbing any of Olson. I just think he's too injury prone. One guy I am targeting is Ian Thomas in like the very last round of best balls if I miss out on all of the other uh, top tight end targets and need, desperately need a backup. I think he's a, he's a great Hail Mary option. Any thoughts on these guys? Not, not really. So Ian Thomas was also a, a guy who was hurt last year. You know, Olsen can't seem to stay healthy, but neither – Good Thomas. He's got a lot of upside. Maybe down the road he, he contributes a little more. I'm just not sure. Even if he starts to take more and more snaps and, and volume, how big that ceiling really is. All right, let's move on to the New Orleans Saints. Uh, some interesting moves here. They got rid of Mark Ingram, who's now in Baltimore. They got rid of Benji Watson, who's now in New England. They brought in Jared Cook from the Raiders. Uh, they brought in Latavius Murray from the Vikings. So – Probably a pretty similar construction to their offense. Do you have any general thoughts on this team? 
I, th I think you know, obviously they're a major, you know, they easily should have probably been in the Super Bowl. They're back for more. Can they get home field? All that, that you know, we'll discuss that in other videos. My, my biggest question from a fantasy perspective is can or will Latavius Murray garner the Ingram role or is Kamara going to have to do more? Will he wear down? Is he going to just get more work? Uh, that's a really interesting running back situation they have. They added Buck Allen as well. And I'm just interested to see what they do in terms of Ingram departing and these new backs. Yeah, I, I think that the coaching staff has come out and said that they, they don't view Kamara as like an every down back and they kind of want to limit his touches. So I do think he will take over that role. And I think it's another one of these picks where you're going to get some production out of an RB2. Uh, he's going as the RB35 right now. And then if, heaven forbid, anything should happen to Kamara, all of a sudden you walk yourself into an RB1. So I think he's a pretty smart target. I think he's a good handcuff. Uh, and I think he's viable to start in deeper leagues as well. Uh, are you getting to any Drew Brees? Not really. Uh, for me, you know, we, we just talked about Matt Ryan. Uh, there are just other QBs that – that I'm interested in breeze low key wasn't as sharp late in the year. Um, and I'm not saying that he's going to have a, a down year, but I, I'm not sure that I'm willing to, to pay for him. And there's just, there's a lot of QBs across this league that to me are a little more interesting at this point. This has quietly become one of the most run heavy offenses in the entire NFL. They ranked 30th in pace last season and their run rate was fifth. Drew Brees' stats have been going down every season. Uh, what makes up for the Saints, uh, what makes up for it is his efficiency and his accuracy. So if either of those things start to wane, the downside is huge. And I don't think they're going to be returning to a pass-first offense anytime soon. So uh, people are taking Brees a little earlier than I think they should based on name recognition. Uh, so I'm with you there. I'm pretty much fading away. How will these receivers, Michael Thomas, have one of the most efficient uh, starts or one of the most efficient starts to a career and one of the most prolific uh, efficiency seasons of all time last season with an 85% catch rate. You have Ted Ginn, who's getting up there, but is a field stretcher, and Traquan Smith, who could give you a couple big games a season. Uh, Traquan Smith, I know you're high on. Any other thoughts on, on these guys? Not really. I think the other two are kind of they're, – they're falling where, in my opinion, they should be. I have no problem. Michael Thomas is a great player. But if, if you draft him, you're not taking one of the other premier players in this league. And I'm not really looking to target the Saints team on the whole. Traquan Smith, you mentioned, for best ball in particular, he's. I, I think there's no doubt that he's going to produce some monster weeks for you. And then he's going to have some weeks where he's non-existent. So if it fits into what you're trying to do for that given team, you can give him a look uh, late in a late round. But it's going to be really interesting to see how New Orleans responds. Obviously, the last two years, some freak fluke plays have really derailed them in the playoffs. They have the core intact. But at the same time, I don't think I'm as high on the Saints team as most. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. I'm, I've been grabbing Ted Ginn in the last round of best balls because I do think he still has that. Like he kind of has that upside to give you three or four weeks of the season where he's going to be an elite uh, an elite back. But um, <clears throat> let's move on to one of my favorite fades of the year, uh, Jared Cook. I have not been getting any Jared Cook at his current ADP. Uh, he's going – he finished last year as the tight end five, but that was ten places higher than any other uh, point in his career. So uh, career season, moving to an offense that people perceive as being a pass-first offense, and he's 32 years old. I think regression's coming, and people are drafting him as though he's not going to regress. Do you have any takes on Jared Cook? I'm not super high on him either, to be honest. And, you know, just to add to more things – this is a Saints team that we've seen. They've used a, a nu numerous tight ends within, you know, when they had Benji Watson, they had other guys come in and they were rolling out creative players all, all year. It felt like a tight end and they, they like to get creative Sean Payton. It makes them really dynamic. But from a fantasy perspective, that's not what we want. We want condensed volume. Like we talked about with Carolina where we know that, okay, the targets, the snaps, they're going to this guy and obviously cook will be involved, but for me, not, not a priority by any stretch. All right, I'm glad we are in agreement there. Let's move on to the last team in the division, probably the most fun, exciting team in this division, for my money anyways, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who had the number one passing offense in the NFL last season. 5,000 yards, 5,100 yards, 8.6 yards per attempt. Todd Munkin and his air raid style offense are gone. Bruce Arians and Byron Left, which are in. This passing offense should actually uh, go down a little bit, I think, because Arians is generally about a about a top 10, top, or but, a, but a 15th to 10th uh, passing offense every year in his career, though, though those numbers are trending up a little bit. 
Uh, let's dive right in. Jameis Winston, number two ranked quarterback in Austin Hill's rankings. I've been reaching around early in best ball just based off of them. What are you doing with famous Jameis this year? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, he's an interesting one. You know, this is it for him now. I mean, for him in Tampa, he's got to start getting it together. It's going to be a departure eventually. But from a fantasy perspective, I totally get, you know, being interested. I find myself interested, but at the same time, there's a lot of red flags to me. I, I'm not sure, as you said, that the passing offense is going to be as prolific as Jameis. The floor is low. So can you go there in certain spots? Yeah, but I, I know I'm kind of beating a dead horse here. I find myself looking to guys like Matt Ryan, Cam, other players in the same division, and then there's a handful across the league that I, I think make better fits for me than, than Jameis. All right, we are in disagreement there. It doesn't happen very often, but That's good. Uh, I have a stat. I have a stat for you. Uh, in in the in the eight games that uh, he started and finished last season, when he wasn't benched for throwing like nine picks, he finished as the QB four. So I think there's some upside there, and uh, I think. Uh, you know, if you're targeting kind of you're waiting on quarterbacks a bit, I think he's a fine, a fine QB one. There's so many weapons in this offense. Let's get into some of them right now. Mike Evans, um, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard should be a fairly concentrated offense now that Adam Humphreys is gone. Uh, there are and Deshaun Jackson, sorry, as well. So there are, are quite a few targets up for grabs, 470 snaps in the slot. Uh, what's your favorite take here? Are you are you buying into all of the Godwin and uh, O.J. Howard hype? So for Godwin, uh, I'm definitely there. And I, I do want to say real quick on Jameis, part of the reason is I, I do think that on a macro level, a lot of people are interested. So there's that opportunity cost. If he went under the radar, I would certainly have some interest. I wrote about him in, you know, in our preview that I, I do like him in certain situations, but it's just, I don't know if I can pay that premium. But Chris Godwin is a guy, you just mentioned some of the departures for the box. He stands to really benefit. Um, ton of promise last year. I think he just continues on that trajectory. I'm a little less inclined to jump on the O.J. Howard train. I know a lot of people are, are very high on him. Think that he can be in that maybe second tier of tight ends, but behind you know the big big names. But for me, give me Chris Godwin. And we haven't talked about the running backs just yet, but that's where I'll be attacking mostly on this Bucks team. Yeah, so like I'm, I'm with you. I believe the Chris Godwin hype is real. I think he's, he's apparently never going to leave the field. He's going to be a hundred catch guy, and I think all those things are correct. One of the problems I have with drafting him, though, is that people are just taking him like around earlier than they should quite often. At least that's been happening to me a lot. So uh, I, I have guys like Robert Woods still on the board, and I'm just going to take Robert Woods 100 percent of the time. I mean, the thing is, Robert Woods doubled Godwin's fantasy totals last year. Doubled them. He had 1,400 yards. So Although I don't expect that from Woods again this season, I think when you're drafting those two players right next to each other, uh, you're you're looking you're banking on a huge improvement from Godwin, which I, I think is coming, but I, I just don't think you're getting the value at his current ADP. So uh, on, in in uh, drafts where he's dropping, I'm I'm fine to take him, but um, that's that's kind of where I, I land on that. How about uh, OJ Howard? He's the other consensus chalk likely con consensus choice to to be the tight end that breaks out this season. I'm interested in him, but I'm not getting to a lot of him because I find that I, the, there are always quality wide receivers and running backs around that position like Chris Carson. But that being said, I think he does have some real potential if he can stay healthy. Certainly has some potential, certainly has some interest. But, you know, I guess the theme of this team, and maybe we're saying it on different players, but it's to me, I evaluate these guys and I like them, but it seems like the public likes them more. And when you're talking about drafts, that's half the battle. You know, if people, you know, you mentioned this with Godwin, if you have him, you know, pegged for a certain tier, well, if people are going to reach for him, it doesn't matter that you like him. You'll let other people chase that. And that's kind of how I feel with Jameis in some situations. That's how I feel with OJ Howard. Uh, I have no problem. And I do think that there's a lot of scenarios where he's effective this year. But when I've looked in drafts that I've done, he's just gone a little earlier than I'm willing to grab him. And there are players around him that I think are better suited uh, for those ADPs. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Uh, I'm just waiting on Vance McDonald, assuming some uh, some jerk doesn't doesn't move up four rounds and take. Yeah, what are you gonna do? For me, uh, Vance McDonald. Don't. That's gonna be the secret to my success in our fantasy league. But what do you make of, of Ronald Jones in particular? I know we haven't touched on these running backs just yet. Mm -hmm. Awful start to his career, but clearly, you know, he's got plenty of time. Maybe Arians gets him going this year. What 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 do you say? 
Yeah, yeah. I think he's like I, I've been taking him actually a lot in best balls, and I think the reason is just because I feel like he's the most likely candidate to win this starting job if someone wins the starting job. Um, we've seen what Peyton Barber has to offer, and I think I think he's he's actually kind of an underrated back, but uh, I don't think the ceiling is there for Barber the way it is for Jones. So I've been targeting Jones a little bit more, even though I think he's much riskier, and it looks like Peyton Barber is the de facto starter right now. But uh, we'll see. It's early in the season. Uh, Ronald Jones was the youngest running back in the NFL last season. Apparently came in with a bit of a fig jam attitude, so uh, I think that you know, maybe a humbling experience from year one getting benched. Uh, he certainly has a talent to be a, a number one running back. So I, I don't really have a problem uh, taking him where he's currently going. I'm very similar. Uh, I think that long term, he could be a major factor for this Bucks team. Might be some speed bumps and roadblocks in the, from now till then. But long term, I'm willing to buy. And I'm willing to buy in drafts because I do think as the season wades on, he could start to increase his volume and increase his role on this team. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, I think that's gonna do it. We did it. We're there. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in, everybody. Uh, make sure to check out all of our content on Osmo.com, including Osmo's season-long rankings. Ben and I have been uh, doing thirty all all thirty-two team previews. Uh, we just have one division left before the season uh, gets started here. So uh, we will be back with the NFC West uh, very shortly. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys.